I like to dance because it's a way that I can move and just express myself. I like to show other people what I've created, what I've felt, and say, this is where I come from, and this is how I feel about this, and this is what I created from just that feeling. In order to be a successful artist, you have to acquire a sort of fearlessness about your life and the work that you do, and, and kids come here and they, they find people who are totally different than they are, but they're also exactly the same and that they have complete respect for what, what one another are doing. So they don't need to be defensive about what they've chosen to follow in life. They don't need to come up with a justification for spending you know, six hours a day practicing the piano or working in the dance studio. And with that, they can sort of shed those typical society judgments and they can be who they are. I strongly believe that my dance training was what made me academically proficient. Idlewild was a platform to, to explore you know, all the different options that you could have career-wise because arts was informing you know, how, how to live your life and how to manage your time and how to be a productive young individual. It's an empowering environment and it's a sophisticated environment. Idlewild gave me the foundation to succeed in college and then, then furthermore in life. We have a very strong academic program to go with our arts. And some people would say that that's because, well, you know, if you if you don't succeed as an artist, you gotta be able to do something else, so you should have this academic program. But that's really missing the point. In order to be an artist, you have to have time, and you have to have, have the space in order to go deep into your craft, whether it's painting or dancing or being an actor or whatever it is. And then you have to have this academic education in order to have breadth. Otherwise, you're gonna be an artist with nothing to say if you don't know anything about the world or anything about other cultures or people. So uh, they study either uh, creative writing, dance, fashion design, film and digital media, music, theater, or visual art. Half of their day is spent diving deep into one of those art forms, uh, whichever one they choose. And then for the rest of the time, they're studying a college prep academic program. Our school actually started as a summer program following World War II. It has always been for students of all ages, but today it ranges from our children's center where they're five years old to our adult program where they are much older than five years old. If they can come up the hill and take classes and immerse themselves in the arts in this beautiful campus, then we invite them to be a part of our summer program. Part of the joy in my life is to take what little I know about music and give it away. I come to Idlewild every summer, now for 28 years in a row, because I love the idea of the power of music as a vehicle to transform lives. Working with children is more a formative stage, and the idea here is to help them develop a musical understanding, not only to play the instrument better, but to play the instrument better with other people in a collaborative adventure. And the real dream I have is for them to go on, not so much seeking a career, although that's fine, but actually as weekend warriors, so that they're in Poughkeepsie, New York as a lawyer, but on the weekend they're playing viola in the Poughkeepsie String Quartet. So the idea is to keep doing music forever. I've always been a, a natural player. Music is, is a total gift to me. I have no idea how I know music. Okay, now let's go, let's go way down in the mud. We're gonna play it even slower than we actually started. Yeah. You know, going straight to New Orleans. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, the uh, 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 the uh. I feel that I'm not making a sacrifice in terms of my ability to play music, to teach it. 
my approach is to give them pertinent information. Not only that, I ask pertinent questions. And if you listen closely, they'll give you the information that you need so that you can open the door to the candy store and they can go in and pick and choose what, what, they, what they like. Because basically, music is, is an autodidact kind of thing. It's self-taught, basically. We can only lead them and point them in the right direction and all of a sudden, they get it. What I enjoyed about this whole thing is that you, you said, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you took in a deep breath, uh -huh. like, like a horn player, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the nature of jazz. It's, uh, uh, well, it's the nature of music, period. We need to preserve this music, and the only way we can do it is with our young people. That's the best way to preserve this music is to make them aware, and they need to be cognizant of how important history is, and this music is definitely history. It's a democracy, and it exudes America at its best. The mission of Idlewild Arts is to change lives through the transformative power of art. We do that in a very unique way in Idlewild. The community that we're in up here, 6,000 feet in the San Jacinto Mountains, on this beautiful campus that's 205 acres, over 70 buildings, and all areas of arts being practiced at all times during the year. So we really embody that transformative power, and then what we've learned is that by engaging deeply in the arts, it changes them and they go out and change the world.